morning, church family. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're going to start singing now. Our first song is, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. This is an important thought. Uh, we can all be thinking about this. Have we all, each one of us, decided now to follow Jesus? Wonderful. to see you here today. Welcome to Camarilla Seventh-day Adventist Church. And for those who have been here for the first time, visitors, we're glad you're here to join us in the service. You know, I have my alarm set at 5.20 in the morning. So in the morning when it rings, 
I have this feeling, oh, I gotta go to work. Tuesday, it rings again, same feeling, gotta go to work. For some reason, I didn't turn it off this, this morning. So it rang. So I'm half asleep, I was gonna say, I gotta go to, oops, it's Sabbath. I don't have to go to work. So you just have this excitement that it's Sabbath. I don't have to do, I don't have to do anything. And for us, we wait for this day, you know, during the week. I can't wait till it's weekend. I can't wait till Sabbath. So we thank the Lord for having that special day that we could come and just not worry about anything. Just come, enjoy with our family, and worship the Lord. Okay. So if you look at your bulletins, there's a few announcements that I want to bring out. Um, tonight... Uh, is a nice night to have some warm soup. So there's a worship and soup cook-off tonight. There's going to be judging, there's prizes. So if you have a prize recipe of a soup, we'd welcome that. But if not, just bring your favorite soup and come tonight and it starts at five o'clock. And then tomorrow there's going to be a baby shower here at 1030 for Gabriel Alexandro Fierson Castro, that's a long name, um, son of Alex and Gabe and great-grandson of Nancy Tinsley. So for those who can come and support them, it would be wonderful. Um, there's also a musical Esther, a Linda Vista drama uh, on February 28th, so we'd like you to support our Linda Vista School. And I think we have an announcement from Crop. It's about this time of year, as everybody, most everybody knows, it's, it's crop walk time. And we're about a month away from crop walk, except that this year they renamed it. It's no longer crop walk, it's crop hunger walk. So it'd be better identify what it's all about. But in any case, we and a bunch of, a number of other churches in town sponsor this event. And uh, it's coming up on March 8th. And if you'd like to participate as a walker, you need to pick up a registration form for me. I'll be out in a folder, I mean, that foyer afterwards. And uh, look around for sponsors to sponsor you on the walk. And it's all a good cause. We're trying to fight hunger around the world, and this is part of it. Uh, I somehow ended up being a, a crossing guard this year. So <laughs> I'll need a registration person at the, the desk to take in the people as they register for the walk. So if anybody wants to volunteer to sit there and, and do that for me for about three hours, I guess it'll be. Uh, I sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, one more thing. Um, the whole conference uh, that is on February 22, um, it is a, a whole plant-based diet conference, so there is a, a cost and there's a discount for members. So um, you can look into that. And please look at the weekly reminders for the different meetings this week. Uh, shall we stand for um, our prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us. You have been with us. You have answered our prayers. You have given us uh, all the blessings and health. And in a special way, thank you for giving us this Sabbath that we could just focus our mind to you. Be with us through this service. And again, thank you for all your love to us. Just let me pray. Amen. May be seated, please.
I invite you, the congregation, as far as possible to kneel with me in prayer. <clears throat> Loving Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to come to your house this Sabbath morning. You've opened the windows of heaven for us this morning. You've sent showers of rain. I'm reminded that that represents the early and the latter rain, and we ask for both of those in abundance in our hearts and lives so that we are fully and completely ready to meet you when you come in the clouds of heaven. This morning I pray for each and every one of us that our hearts will be opened to you, that all of the cares of the world will be laid aside, and that we will come humbly, graciously, hungering, for the good news that you have for us today. For those that need that healing touch, we ask for that today in a very special way. Bless us in this worship hour that all that we hear, all that we see, all that we understand today will go with us all week long and empower us to do more work with you and for you than ever before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, page 12. Sabbath people. We're all here today. Glad to see everybody today. Well, I, everybody gets seen the junior guy before, right? I like the back part of it it's called the factory. I got a little part here I want to tell you about. Not so dirty money. Although many people believe coins covered with germs. They are made of trace met metals and silver, nickel, aluminum and copper, which don't allow the survival of organisms. In fact, they are poisonous to many of the germs. So I think everybody should reach over and get all that dirty money out, especially the folding money. That's, that's probably got the most, most germs on it. And get ready to put it in the offering plate. Will the deacons please stand? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for this time we can come together as a church and take part in this service and give back to you that you so loving and given to us. Bless these funds to nurture our souls 
and get the blessing we need. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Cole, for that beautiful music this morning. We appreciate it so much. I invite you to take your Bibles. Open them up to Psalms 98. We'll read verse 1 together. Psalms 98, verse 1. I'm reading from the NIV this morning. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. And I say thank you, Jesus, for the salvation that he gives us today. Again, I invite you to kneel with me as we pray this morning. Loving Heavenly Father, this morning we come as a family to worship you. As we come together, we come bringing our stories of the week, our plans for the future, and how exciting we are that we can come together on a Sabbath morning and just take time from the busyness of the world and just reset and reflect and to learn from one another and from you the plans that you have for us. This morning, Lord, I know that there are a number of our church family members that are here that have special concerns that they would like you to listen to and to respond to. Those concerns may be for a health issue, a financial issue, some crisis issue in their lives, some addiction issue, whatever that issue is, relational issue, we ask Jesus for your healing touch upon them and us. For those that are not here, for those that are participating by watching us online right now, we include all of you and your families in this request for prayer today. May you be drawn into this circle of love just as we are here. And so guide and lead us. And we just say thank you in advance for hearing and answering our prayers. And with those requests come our praises, Jesus, for the wonderful ways that you are 
blessing us all week, every week. So we give you praise today as we sing songs of grace and love to you. And this morning I have a very special anointing on Jem and Katie as they present their message to us today, your message through them about your love and grace and how you are working in their lives and in their ministries around the world. Bless them and us today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's my privilege to welcome Jim and Katie McDonald back to Camarillo. It's good to have you here. And so I'm going to turn the time over to them and just sit back with a happy, relaxing, not go to sleep, but happy, relaxing time. You're not going to be able to go to sleep. No, no, no. I can assure you of that right now. Jim's got an inspiring program, and Katie's on the sound booth back there, so they've they're ready to go. So come on up, Jim, and bless us with a wonderful service today. There it is. How y'all doing? Everybody awake this morning? It's good to be back in Camarillo. We love coming to your church. I bring you greetings from around the world since we've seen you last. We're now living in Normandy, France permanently. And I'll tell you more about that little circumstance in a little bit. You'll see why. But we are living there and we're coming back to the United States only four months out of the year are we touring in the States anymore. So there's a reason. But pray for us. I know this is a praying church. And pray for us as we go out into this evil world. It's an evil, evil world. But one thing that I know, people still are seeking Jesus. I can tell you firsthand because I sing to them from atheists to Muslim, all the way back to Jews, all the way back to Catholics, Baptists. They're all searching for something. And an atheist especially, they're always looking for something. They don't know quite what it is until I get finished with them. That would be Jesus, not Jim. He knows you better than you know yourself. I know that's true for me. Sit back and relax. Enjoy Sabbath. It's a wonderful day. I was going to say it's when the sun always shines a little brighter, but today it gave us a little rain. That's a good thing. We need it here in Southern California, don't we? God bless you all. Dennis, thank you so much for letting us come back. We prayed for this guy a lot over this past year. He's had a lot of health problems, and here he is sitting right here looking at me right now. And Rochelle, she's around here somewhere. I went to school with her, you know, at Dallas Junior Academy in Dallas, and we go way back. So anyway, it's good to be back in Camarillo. God bless you all. At the moment I began, when a child became a man, saw my future in the making, saw the path my life was taking, saw a million things I never understand. You know me better than I know myself, mm, better than I know myself, time after time. Shown it to be true, yeah. No one loves me like you do. You were there. So let it rain or let it shine. You're with me all the time. I waking in my sleeping In the secret thoughts I'm keeping You know everything about this heart of mine You know me better than I know myself 
Better than I know myself Time after time You've shown it to be true yeah. No one loves me like you do Happy Better Sabbath to you myself. How are you, darling? Good to see you How are you? Happy Sabbath to you, my darling Happy Sabbath to you Good No one loves me like you do When the end of time has come I know you'll take me home So I thank you for tomorrow All my joys and all my sorrow You know everything about this heart of you know me better than I know myself Better than I know myself Time after time You've shown it to be true yeah. No one loves me like you do You know me better than I know myself Better than I know myself Time after time You've shown it to be true yeah. No one loves me like you do No one loves me like you For five years, this next song was number one in Southern Gospel music. There's never been another song that has ever lasted that long at number one. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. See if you know this song. I'm not on an eagle tree. Cause I'm nothing on my own And I make mistakes And I often slip I'm just common flesh and bone But I'll prove someday Just what I say That I'm of a special Cause when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. A look of love was on his face, the thorns were on his head. ran down that scarlet robe and stained the crimson rain though his eyes were on the cloud that day he looked ahead in time cause when he was on the cross was on his mind for he knew me and yet he loved me he whose glory makes the heaven shine so such mercy cause when he was on the cross I 
There is no problem too big that God can't solve. Mountains, when we were driving up from Santa Ana today, we watched those mountains over here. There's no mountains too tall that he cannot move. Storms, look at the storms. They're expecting another blizzard tomorrow in Boston, another seven inches of snow, and here we are. There is no storm too dark that he cannot calm sorrow there is no sorrow too deep that he cannot soothe that's a promise there is no problem too big God cannot solve it there is no mountain too tall he cannot There is no storm to dark, God cannot calm There is no sorrow to deep, He cannot soothe me. If He carried the weight of the world upon His shoulder, I know my brother that He will carry you. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know my sister that he will carry you. He said, come unto me, all Shoulder. 
I know my sister that he will carry First Peter 5, it says, cast all your cares upon me, and I will carry you. He will carry In the last couple of weeks, I had a mentor of mine pass away. You may have heard of this man he was a great pastor. He was president of unions and conferences. His name was John Lohr Sr. John Lohr Sr. was a very good close friend of mine because he knew the troubles that I was going through as a child in an alcoholic home. He was the pastor at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Dallas. And he knew that my mother was an alcoholic and my father was an alcoholic. He actually told my mother and gave her advice to leave my father because of the abuse. That was the first time in history that I had ever heard of that an Adventist pastor gave advice to leave in a marriage. He really stepped out in faith. That man meant so much to me that I would sit on the front row of the Dallas Central Church with his son, John Lohr Jr. He was the conference president up in Montana and a pastor and now at the union office. I spoke with Johnny this past week. He says, Jim, do you mind if we play a song of yours at my father's funeral? And I said, not at all. (laughs) He says, until then, my father loved you singing until then on your CD. And I said, go for it. I thought maybe I should go back to Fletcher, North Carolina and sing for the funeral myself. But we had a concert schedule and couldn't do it but that mentor of mine meant so much to me because I would sit with Johnny on the front row right here every Sabbath and I would watch him preach what a guy and then it came about we're about 12 years old that's the time you start making decisions whether you want to be baptized or not back in the you know 50s and 60s And we made a decision to be baptized, and so his son and I were baptized at the same time in the Dallas tank. (laughs) It was special to us. So this man we just lost was a great friend. Mentors in our life mean a lot to us, don't they? As you get older, I'm only 39, but as you get older, you start looking backwards, don't you? I know I do. I look back on these guys that cut their teeth on the road. I think of the times that the Barron Brothers are on these Cena Cruiser Greyhound buses, and I never knew that I would end up for nine years on a Greyhound bus singing with Heritage Singers, but I did. Great times, great experiences with you. Used to take us home with you and feed us. I never forgot it, ever. Used to sing on this stage right here, Camarillo. We'd hit Ventura, Thousand Oaks, Cramarillo, all the way into the White Memorial. I'll never forget those times. I'll never forget Ray Turner. They used to sing at Texas camp meeting. When they ring those golden bells. Wow. He was a water guy. And then as time went on, my grandfather came special to me. Because he was the guy that kept me in this church fourth generation Seventh-day Adventist in an alcoholic home. Wow, that was unique circumstances. I always wondered how I was able to go to Dallas Junior Academy with Rochelle for all 10 years. And I knew my mother wasn't making enough money. My father was off somewhere. Never saw him but every three months. But I always remember this basket going by, and it was called the Worthy student fund I never knew that it affected me (laughs) even today when it passes by I just about break out in tears because you helped me go from first grade all the way graduating in Adventist schools the whole way the whole way very important that we support our children in school very important we support our teachers especially in our schools as well 
My grandfather used to take me to work with him downtown Dallas on the bus. <laughs> Remember the bus? Used to go in there, and that thing would be going around and around. You put a little token in there. I thought that was pretty cool. That was my job, by the way. And we get off the bus because downtown in Elm Street, never forgot it, because the Baker Hotel was there, and my grandfather was a soda jerk. Now, for the young people sitting here, a soda jerk is a guy that can turn around in about three to four minutes, make you a milkshake or a malt, real malt, with French fries and a hamburger, and it's in front of you. That was what you called a soda jerk, and he's multitasking all over the place. I thought that was cool, too. We get off the bus, and I never forgot as a child, there was a man standing there, and he had a Bible. And his radius was about 8 to 10 feet. That's it. He could not go outside that radius. But what he would do, he would stand here and with a big old Bible in his hand. He'd put it next to his cheek. Maybe you saw him. They're called street preachers. And he would go back and forth and he'd say, For God so loved the world! <laughs> you could hear his voice all over downtown Dallas. Then, within a 30-second period, he would usually start singing a song on top of that. I thought that was something else. Let's see what you got in 30 seconds. And as we were leaving that spot, going toward the Baker Hotel, he would always be singing. Amazing grace. I heard it. I loved it. I loved it. But I had questions when I was a child. And I was holding on to my grandpa's hand. And I'd squeeze it, and he'd stop me. He'd look down at me. He says, son, what you want? I said, grandpa, is that man crazy? He says, oh, no. He says, Jim, he says, that's the only way that man knows how to tell people about Jesus. Whoa. I never forgot that. I never, ever forgot that. Accept people where they are. Wow, there's a new one. Accept them where they are because Jesus loves them and only he can change their life. As I grew older, I never forgot my grandpa and I never forgot that old man standing on a corner. I gathered my writers together here in Hollywood. We were putting a new CD together, a new country CD. And I told them the story that I just told you. And they said, we need to write a song. I said, okay, let's write her. So we did. This is it. Is that all right? It's simply called The Preacher. I hope you like it. There was an old man standing on the corner With a worn-out leather Bible in his hand Every morning I'd walk by him and he'd be smiling With a joy I've never seen on any man The lines written in his face told a story Of the sorrow and the pain that he'd been through But his voice just kept on ringing with a new song he was singing Something about a Savior that he knew his words kept whispering inside But I shook it off, I quickened up my stride He sang amazing grace, how sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me The words from his heart, they were tearing me apart Cause I knew inside I'd never felt that way I'd been busy climbing up the corporate ladder Happiness one more dollar away, so they'd say But with every step I'd climb it grew clear in my mind That kind of joy quickly fades away when evening after work, I drove home to find it empty. She left a note, here's all she had to say. Kids and I have gone, we've been neglected for too long. I'm 
sorry that it had to end this way A tear splashed softly on the floor Will I ever find the joy I'm looking for? Then the words a preacher said Kept ringing in my head He sang amazing grace How sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me The words from his heart They were tearing me apart Cause I knew inside I'd never felt that way well, God, I've been unfaithful, and I've been untrue. Jesus, if you hear me, I need to know who you. Because I tried to make it, living on my own. God, please save this foolish man, for I am so alone. My legs are kind of shaky, rising from my knees. Reason for the old man's joy found a place in me. I sang Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. My heart can see when I pass through a heartache here is just a stepping stone. That's winding memories of this old trouble is not my final. So I'm to. Must go on singing until joy I'll carry on until the day when my eyes behold. God calls me. The things of earth, oh, the dim and lose their value when we recall their only power. That caused my heart to tremble
in our hearts must go on singing until with joy let's carry on When our eyes behold King Jesus, God calls us We had a beautiful opportunity to go to Berlin, Germany, right after the wall fell. Yesterday and two weeks ago, we went to the Reagan Library and to the Nixon Library yesterday. There are two pieces of the Berlin Wall. If you've never been to those libraries and museums, I highly, highly encourage you to do that as an American. Those are the days of class. Those were the days of parties and dining and oh beautiful. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I went into the Reagan Museum with Katie and we walked under that big airplane hanging. How they got that baby up there and hanging, I don't know, but it's up there. And then you see Marine One right below that, the helicopter. And you go through the museums, but there's a piece of the Berlin Wall right outside in the garden at the Reagan Museum. And if you look down at the plaque, it says, given on behalf of Carl Karcher and his wife. Carl Karcher was a friend of Katie and mine. He was the one that owned and invented Carl's Juniors. If you go into those museums, make sure you look, because we went to the Nixon Museum yesterday. It's right there, and there, there's a little plaque that says donated by Carl and his wife. The reason I told you that is because we were invited to go before that wall even fell, and then after it fell. We were there, and it was the first time after it fell that the East and the West Adventists got together. Wow. And they invited me to sing for it. Unbelievable. Ugly Texan. Well, I mean, here I am. We showed up there. They got a big auditorium. Katie and I looked in the auditorium, and they had their Bible here under this arm and a songbook under this arm. This was the first time that they were free to sing and to read out of their Bibles together, together. They escorted us to the front, and my wife speaks German, and I said, what are they saying? So she was translating to me. She says, Jim, they're getting ready to sing the first song <laughs> together for the first time, that they're free. Wow, this is great. What song would it be? Think about it. What song would it be? Stood there, and Katie and I were just listening. I hear the hymnals start to open. <laughs> Fairest Lord Jesus. Wow. It was great. That afternoon I did a concert for him. Man, I tell you, it was nice to shake hands of free people. Free people. Nice to meet the Adventist Christians that sacrificed all those years to become where they are right now. We were there, where were you? Then we went to China. They warned us on a Friday night, don't say too much, Jim, don't say too much about Jesus because there'll be communist guards out in the audience. You're gonna have about 2,000 people at the concert in Shanghai, but be very careful 
the pastor was trembling. He says, I have to give them my sermons days in advance. And when I get it back, it's marked in red that I can't say this and I can't say this. We prayed a lot that night on that Friday night because I had Sabbath morning in Shanghai, China, with 2,000 Adventist Christians. A lot of visitors, too. They'd never seen a Christian singer before. We were going to be the first. And I told Katie, we had a deal. It better be good. It better be good. Katie had a great spot for the sound system. It was on the third floor down a hallway. Oh, it was perfect. It was perfect. I'm down here, and I've got all the Chinese people in front of me, and there's a screen right behind me like that. We've already had the words to my song translated into Chinese like we do every other country in the world, and we're praying on the first song that that guy's catching through another translator what I'm saying and get those words on the screen. See, all this stuff has to work together or you'll lose your audience. What would you do for the first song, for the first time for the Chinese people? I prayed, Lord, here we go. Poor Katie, she's looking behind my back, making sure I had music and microphone. On a hill far away. Do I dare look and see if the words made it on the screen? They were there. It worked. Oh, and when the Chinese people clap, they clap like this. It was so cute. I got so involved in that concert, I had a cordless mic, and I walked way out into the audience. And the song came up, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way. And I noticed this little Chinese lady, cute. I loved her. I wanted to take her home. She had her hymnal open, and it was all in Chinese. It was Trust and Obey in Chinese. See how the Lord works? Isn't it amazing how he works? We were there. Where were you? Slovakia. We had a hotel overlooking a parking lot in Slovakia. Katie's up in the middle of the night. She's opening the curtain. She's in, call the police. I was deep asleep because we had just done a huge concert. I said, what is wrong? says, Jim, they're kicking a man to death in the parking lot. Call the police. I got on the phone to the reception desk. I said, call the police. They never showed up. The next day, we went to the Catholic Church. Those are the people we were working with in that area. We asked our friend, the nun, what, what's going on here? She says, Jim, Katie, don't go to that parking lot. I said, why? She says, especially at night. That's where the mafia brings people. And they kill him in that parking lot. Wonderful. And our hotel room's overlooking that. The next night, Katie's at the curtain. Stop! She's got the window open, yelling, because she knows the police aren't going to come. She says, Jim, they're running over a couple with a black Mercedes. I got up, and we both were screaming. I think Katie was a lot louder than I was. And the Mercedes stopped. I think she saved their life. We were there. Where were you? Sarajevo, Bosnia. We did a concert in the Adventist church with blackout curtains. We actually stayed in the room of the pastor upstairs with blackout curtains because they would shoot at the windows all day. Katie and I, I don't know why, but we like to intermingle with the people in the streets and walking the streets of Sarajevo. There's snipers, there's, there's big tanks in the street, K4. I even had a guy come out of K4, white tank, and he says, what in the world are you doing here? We said, we're giving a free concert at this church. He says, God bless you. And he got back into the tank. We were there. Where were you? The reason I'm telling you this story is because we know where you were. This is a praying church. I know this for a fact. We get your emails. We get your letters. We get your phone calls. Jim, we can't go with you, but we're praying for your ministry. Wow. Do 
you have any idea what that means to us as two people? Not a big organization, but two people? Do you know what goes through our minds when we're riding on a train from Novi Sad to Belgrade during a war? A war? Your faces go before us. We cannot remember every name, but we remember faces. This man right here, I heard he was sick. I had every prayer warrior around the world praying for Dennis. See, we have, he's in a prayer book. And every Monday morning, I told you, there's prayer warriors. I just picked up three in Thousand Oaks a couple of weeks ago. They got me in the back room. They said, can we be your prayer warriors? Absolutely. Fill this paperwork. No. Volunteers praying for people. We were on that train. And we know what you were doing. You were praying for us. There's a lot of people that come to us after a concert and they said, Jim, we can't help you financially, but we'll pray for you. And I said, thank you. That means just as much. Thank you very much. And they do. We feel every morning evil against what Katie and I do. Went to Thousand Oaks two weeks ago, did a concert. Before we left Santa Ana with the lady that we're staying with right now, something happened. Fridays and Sabbaths are the worst for a Christian for some reason putting your armor on and sometimes you get a ding or something in it or it won't lace up right or some, there's some, something always going on something Sabbath morning I get up we're on our way to Thousand Oaks to have a nice little friendly concert with Thousand Oaks for some reason I'm putting my white shirt on and there's blood all over it what's that all about both of my thumbs in the same place are scraped and they're bleeding not a clue how it happened. That's the stuff that happens. Put Band-Aids on it. This is going to look great for a concert. Put Band-Aids on it. My shoes come untied. Not one, but both. They never come untied. What's going on with this? Katie says, well, I can't get down there in time for you because she says, because of these Santa Anas, I'll, my bl the blood will start coming out my nose. Boy, well, that's a fine fix. So finally, I get them tied, get in the car, and the lady that we're staying with, she just had a big old tree fall over in her front yard. I'm going, I'm wondering if we really should be going in this car today. Get to Thousand Oaks. They introduce me. I come up just like I'm doing here. Both shoes are untied again. Something's going on here. So those big old chandelier lights I got in that church, you know, the Thousand Oaks Church, I kind of moved over. I said, the reason I'm moving over because I'm scared that thing's going to fall in about three or four minutes. This is what happens when you are serving the Lord. Everybody thinks it's a bed of roses. It's not. It's not. Actually, it'd be easier not to serve the Lord. I'm telling you. It's true. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. I keep going through that in my mind. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Put your armor on. Expect things to happen. I'm going to start writing a song. It's always something. Isn't it? You write a list down, it changes. It cha it's always changing. Sometimes you can't even remember where you put that list. I got a list reminding me of lists. This next song is for you. It's a simple song because I'm a simple guy from Texas. But this song, we're going to dedicate it to every person right here, right now, because you're here for a purpose today, not to listen to me. But the Lord wants to give you a blessing for free today. He wants to give you something for free. Somebody's praying for you. Somebody's praying for me. And it tell you something, we all need prayer. That's it. Again, we're living in evil times. You may be able to walk in here every Sabbath at 11 and not go through much during the week. Then pray for us that are out there. We're going through a lot. This old world is collapsing. It's imploding. But there's still people out there that need to hear the Lord. They got to hear about the Lord. Go ye into all the world and what? Teach all or some, all nations. But on the flip side of that coin is Acts. Gather them together and tell them what the Lord has done with you. You're being reported to today. That's Acts. Go ye is what I just told you about Berlin, China, Slovakia, and Sarajevo. 
This song is just for you. Somebody's praying I can feel it Somebody's praying for me Mighty hands are guiding me To protect me from what I can see Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, somebody's praying for me. Safely kept before you throne, Lord, Lord, I believe your angels are watching over me. Well, I've walked the barren wilderness where my pillow was a storm I've been through the darkest caverns where no light has ever shown that there's just, just just somebody who is down on their knees Lord I thank you for our people Praying all this time for somebody's praying. I can. Mighty hands are guiding me to protect me from what I can see. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Somebody's praying for Today, if you came in here and you needed healing in your life, God's always there for you. He healed this man. He can heal your broken heart today. I mean it. 
This is my 42nd year in Christian music, and I've seen a lot of hurt, and I've seen a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. And I've seen people destroyed because of sin, because they just wouldn't accept him. Today, if you walked in here, there's healing in the touch of Jesus' hand. <laughs> All you need to do is reach it and touch it and take it. And he will give you something so free that you can walk out of here and you can say, wow, I can meet the things of this evil world. There's healing in the touch of Jesus' hands. Never forget it. There's a mystery in the cross that only faith reveals that the blood that Jesus shed redeemed our souls and the stripes upon his tortured back his wounded feet and hands still call to those who long to be made whole there's The touch of Jesus' hand. There's healing in the scars of Calvary's land. He knows your hurts, your pain, all you. And he's here right now, reaching out to you. Take this moment and see what only God can do. If a woman is crowd could stretch your hand in faith and barely touch his him and feel the power how much more will you experience wrapped in his embrace he longs to hold you close this very hour there's he the touch of Jesus mm, there's healing in the scars of Calvary's land he knows your hurts your pain all you've been and he's here right now, reaching out to you. Take this moment and see what only God can do. He knows your hurts, your pain, all you've been through, and he's here right now reaching out to you take this moment and see what only God can do see what he can do take this moment and see what only God
We are so fortunate to go around the world taking you with us, not only in prayer, but you've helped us with many projects. Do you remember I told you that we were going to do the first gypsy hymnal in history? The very first. I'm not into this second or third stuff. I want to be number one, okay? If we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's get it in there, and let's get it done. If you didn't see it, this is the new gypsy hymnal. The first in history, by the way. We have the rights on it. And there's over 200 songs in this songbook with the music. With the music. During the process of this project, they kept writing me from Macedonia. It says, Jim, we have 130 songs ready. I said, I want 200. Jim, we have 150 done. They're all done and translated. And I said, I want 200. I don't know why I was doing that. I was just playing with them a little bit. We finally got to 200, <laughs> and we did it. This is it. Afterwards, if you want to look at it, it'll be right here on the front row. You helped us do this. This is a miracle. Do you remember I told you we wanted to do the first gypsy Bible in history? We got a hymnal. What about a Bible? It's never been done. Five years. Five years in the making. You wouldn't believe how the devil attacked us and the translator. He even brought us an atheist. Let me tell you what happened here real fast. In the process of doing the translation of the Bible into the gypsy language, we were thrown so many hammers at us that this is almost too funny to believe. My translator says, I want you to meet this guy on the Internet. He's going to format. Remember now you got to format 900 pages. This guy is an atheist. Oh, it's perfect. Gets better. His name is Elvis. It gets better. He and I go back and forth on the name for the new Gypsy Bible. Now, why are we talking about a name when it's called the Gypsy Bible? He says, oh, no. Can't call it that. You got to call it Romani. Romani Bible. And I said, I'm not going to do it because my people will think it's the, Ro it's the Roman Catholic Church. Trust me, I know my people. I sing too. He says, well, what do you think? And I said, well, since we own it, <laughs> we'll name it the Romani Gypsy Bible. So we did. Now you got to print it. You ever looked into printing a 900-page Bible? You ever looked into the shipping of a 900-page Bible? It almost costs more to ship it with the duty than it does to print it. That's a bad problem to have. Katie and I have been praying on this. It was finished. They kept bugging us. Well, what are we going to do with it? And I said, I don't know yet. I haven't come to a conclusion. And bam, it happened. Got it. We're in the digital age, aren't we? Everybody's got this now. Everybody's got one, two, or three of these. I'm guilty, just like you are. What are we going to do with all this stuff, this technology? Just keep on looking because I got it right here on my arm. No, it's not for satellites or anything like that. But this is the new Romani Gypsy Bible on my wrist. They wear it, they take it off, and they plug it into any computer or device in the world. It pops up on that screen, and it's beautiful. If you want to see it, go to my website, jimmcdonald.org, this afternoon. Click on the Gypsy Bible. Let it come up. You'll see the most beautiful picture of Christ coming out of the water when he was baptized. This is the new Romani Gypsy Bible. Now, exciting news, April 11th. We're winging our way to Macedonia because that's where this all started. With a gypsy CD for the children, remember? The gypsy hymnal. Why are we not going back to Macedonia to release the first gypsy Bible in history? Why? Why? We're going. We're bringing national television in, the gypsy television. We're bringing the president of the union, the conferences. And I'm going to have all my pastors lined up on the front rows. And every time this is given away, not sold because you helped us do this in offerings 
every time they give it away, they're going to take the name and the address of the person in the 50,000 gypsies in the community of Shutka in Skopje, Macedonia that we go into to do concerts. They're going to be able to get their names and follow up. You want to talk evangelism? This is it right here. Now we've entered the digital age. No more printing. And guess what I hope they do? I hope they black market this baby all over Europe. Go ahead and copy it. It's okay. Wow, what better way to get evangelism out there? <laughs> what we want to do is print more of these. That's what we need to do is get more of these so we can give them out so they can steal them and duplicate them. <laughs> now there's a new one for you. Lord's funny, isn't he? I work with the mafia a lot. People go, what? I have to. Sometimes they're the only people that believe in evangelism, believe it or not. They pay for the hall that I sing in. They pay for the advertising. They pay for the transportation sometimes. We go into a little village. Got to work with them. Just don't take money from them. Never take money from a mafia guy. Ever, ever, ever. But you know what? The Lord is amazing. He, we got him in little boxes. He's not in a little box. He's big, big. This is the new Gypsy Bible. Now, you can look at it afterwards. Don't take this one because I'm not releasing it until April. Today, for just a few more minutes to end our concert, you also know that we bring children to us every year in Normandy. We, we've had five to six children from Romania every year. They don't speak one word of English when they come to us. But it's amazing. 1950s phonics still works. We teach them the thes and the was and the wheres. And these children, for the next seven minutes, you're going to see the children that you helped this past summer. Is that all right? Sit back for a few more minutes. I want you to see the kids now because this is the other miracle. This is why we're in Normandy because in Eastern Europe, it's dangerous now. It's very, very dangerous to go over there. I just told you a story about it. But now we have pastors and we have volunteers. We have children coming together together. The East and the West are meeting together at the Safe Haven Refuge in Normandy, France. You're going to see the results of it right now. You ready? Here we go. Welcome to Normandy. We're about four miles from the ocean. We're about 45 minutes from the D-Day beaches, and here's our kids. E-F-G-H-I-J. Okay, here we go. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, Z. There you go. And Pam are married, right? Yes. Pam is the wife. wife. Eric is the husband. Pam has a sister named Kathy. Sister. Yes. Uh oh. But Pam has a brother. She has a brother named brother. Joe. Joe. How does Eric? Brother in law. Yes. Very good. Uh oh. Another brother. Yes. What? His name is Brad. Brad. Eric is related to Brad. How? Brother in law. Very good. Uh oh. Another sister. My goodness. Susan. Pam has another sister named Susan. How is she related to Eric? Sister in law. Yes. So, question. What? Eric and Pam are married. Wife. Wife. Got it? Yes. Yes. They have two children. Yes. If they had one, it would be called. Two. Child. Child. Two. Children. children. One. Child. Two. Children. Uh-oh. Pam's brother, Joe, is here. Yes. How is Eric related? Brother-in-law. No. Yes. Eric has a father. He has a father. What do you call him? Grandfather. Uh, Grandfather. Grandfather. Now he has a father. Very good. 
Okay, Eric has a mother. Mother. Mother, mother. mother. right. Mother. What is the next one? Uh, and she has a great grandmother. Very good. So when we get all of these people together, we have a what? Family reunion. Very good. Family reunion. You got it? Yes. And these are cousins, correct? Yes. yes. Cousins. And when we all get together, family reunion. How many cousins do you have, Hermie? Uh, I think 100. 100? How many do you have, uh, Alec? Six. Six? Yes. How many do you have, Eric? Cousins. Cousins. Well, $1,742,563.01. Wow, pretty good. How about you, Glotty? One million seven hundred forty-two thousand five hundred sixty-three dollars and one cents. Perfect, Ruben. One million seven hundred forty-two thousand five hundred sixty-three dollars and one cents. Perfect. Czech Republic. Perfect. And they used to call Czech Republic and Slovakia together. Czech Republic. That's it. Now number nine is Slovakia. You got it. Czech Republic, Slovakia, got it? And we are where? Where are we right now? France. Where is France? Uh, yeah, Here? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, now let's look at number 10. 10. 10, ten is Austria. See it? Austria, yeah. See it? Yeah. France. What is the heart of Europe? Czech, Czech Republic. Republic. Perfect. And the, this country next to Czech Republic? Slovakia. Perfect. And number 10 is Austria. 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 Is Salzburg and Slovakia or in Austria? Salzburg. Slovakia. No, Austria. Uh, Austria. That's okay. Salzburg, Hermie, is with fork from the kitchen. <laughs> Would you please go in the refrigerator in the other kitchen and get an orange? Orange. Would you please go and get me a knife? No, <laughs> it's in the dishwasher, right? No, no, no. <laughs> no big fork. Perfect. <laughs> That's how much food we consume around here. Thank you. Stay there. Stop. Perfect. Now, give your knife to Reuben. Give your fork to Vladi. <laughs> That's orange, all right. You're right. No, a real orange. That's okay. Look, turn around, show. Look, this is my orange. It's wonderful news. Okay, go put those back in the fridge. Go put that back in the drawer. Lottie, when you put that away, turn the light on in the kitchen. Jim. Moment. Ruben, would you please turn the light off in the kitchen? Off. Light. Good boy. Vladi, please sit there. Very good. Eric, sit. Ruben, turn around. Ruben, go around there and sit on your bench. Everybody stand up. Ruben, sit down. Eric, sit down. Vladi, turn around. Desi, turn around. Hermie, sit. You sit. There you go, Alex. You sit down, please. Turn around. Again. Sit down. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Sit down, Alex. Stand up. Hermie, please turn the light on in the kitchen. Reuben, please go to the other kitchen and turn the light on. You go with Reuben. Turn the light off. Please turn the light off in the kitchen. Desi, turn, stand up. Turn around. Sit down. <laughs> Alex, welcome to Crazyville. This is the last break. Three, two, one, go! Yay! Yay! Finally! Yay! We are finished. You did a great Yay. job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Look. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you very much.
says seashells by the seashore. Very good. Ben. She shirt the seashirt by the she shirt. Again. Uh, she said she shirt by the she shirt. You gotta work on that. She says shot in she says be by the she shore. See shore. Hi everyone, we're here at the Safe Haven Refuge in Normandy, France, and these are the children that you've helped this summer, the summer of 2014. Are you ready for some tongue twisters? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Here we go. What's that seashell thing? She says seashells by the seashore. My name is Eric. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. My name is Vladi. Hi, my name is Daisy. There those thousand thinkers were thinking how did the other three thinkers go through. Hi, my name is Ruben. Hi, my name is Hermie. Picky people pick Peter Pan, peanut butter is the peanut butter, picky people pick. What? Woodchuck? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Thank you, America! And those are your children for 2014. How you like them? <laughs> Aren't they cute? The reason these children are here is because they need the English. When they go home, they'll better their lives. The boy on the right, right over there, Vladi, he works with his mom cleaning a bar. And we need him to get English so he can get a job, better job, better education. It's so safe there, they can sleep outside with a big fire at night. Like I said, the ocean's only about four, about four miles away, and the furthest tides in the world are right here. It goes out over 10 to 15 kilometers out. People from around the world come see us. Don Generioli in front of the refuge. From Macedonia, this is Alex. From Germany on the back row, our friend Konik from Munich. Our Swiss friends from Switzerland, our friends from southern France, Jake and Sophie, in front of the refuge. Our friends from Romania. Another Romanian family. At night in Normandy. Beautiful, isn't it? Another family from Romania. From Kirkland, Washington, the Luces. And there's our kids. Ruben on the left, Hermie, Desi, Vladi and Eric and Katie is in the back there. Those are your kids for 2014. Now the reason we bring them there also is they can go back and help their families. They come here, we take care of them. Clothing, transportation, eating, and man, can they eat. I've never seen, I had five girls one summer. They out, every one of them out ate me. Unbelievable how kids eat nowadays. Today's offering is for the New Gypsy Bible. We want to duplicate more of those. And for the children, we have five boys coming in. They're coming in for the whole summer. And today's offering will go totally to them. We still live on our CDs in the back. And if you can help us today, it's still Jim McDonald World Ministries. It's our nonprofit. Help us today, would you, Camarillo? We have two concerts after today left. And then we go back over to Normandy and tour around all over Europe and we will be there for 10 months. Help us, would you, today? Father, thank you for Sabbath. Thank you for Camarillo. Thank you for them helping us today, especially praying for us. Be with our kids wherever they are right now all over the world. Thank you for letting us have the opportunity to take them on. And, th and thank you, Lord, for this Bible. Wow. 
What an opportunity. What a miracle that you've given us to go release it in Skopje, Macedonia in April. Thank you, Lord. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. While they're finishing today, if you have a special prayer request, this is our prayer book. The other two got full, completely full, and this is our third one. And wherever we are in the world with our warriors, we pray for you. You, you don't have to put your name in here. I'm not looking for a database. I want you to put your special prayer request in this book. I'm going to leave it right here on the front row. And the last one, if you could bring it to me, I would appreciate it because I'll be in the back with Katie. Today on our CDs, they're available for you, and you know how we work them. They're not for sale, but you can take them home. And on Monday, not Tuesday, on Monday, and I'll tell you why, send your check in. We have about $10,000 outstanding of Adventists that owe us money. Can you believe that? It's, it's hard to believe, though. We go to a church, we trust you with our CDs, and when we call you, they, like we're a bill collector. We don't want to be a bill collector, trust me. We don't want to be a bill collector. If you want our CDs, take them, but just mail your check-in on Monday. It's real simple. There's nine award-winning CDs back there, hymns of the church with full L.A. symphony. If you like a lot of the songs today, it's on Trust His Heart, I on the Sparrow is back there. Contemporary, all the way to Country 1 and 2, Volume 1 and 2 that we did in Nashville. There's eight to nine CDs back there. But today I want to give you a free one to give you an incentive to pick up any two of mine. All you do is sign for them. The price is on the back. We'll even give you the envelope to send it on on Monday. I don't think we've ever offered this here. This is Legends Volume 2. We have three of these, 1, 2, and 3. But this is Volume 2. These are the best of the best of the Adventist singers in the world. Dick and Henry Barron. Wedgwood Trio with Del Delker. Walter Artis. Jim McClintock. I don't know how he got on here. Bob Silverman. Herman Harp. Take Three. Donna Klein. They're right here in digital. In digital. It's yours today if you'll pick up any two of mine. We own the masters on these, and we want you to have it for a collection. And if you're interested in getting the other two, go to our website. Is that fair? Pick it up. Katie will be back there. Layla will be back there to help you. And we thank you for coming today. We love you. We pray for you. And thank you for supporting our ministry. Pray for us as we leave four weeks from yesterday. We're going back to Normandy. We've got a lot of stuff we've got to do. Go to Macedonia. Go down to Corsica. We've got a lot of things going on in our ministry. Pray for us. We're on the move. We're on that road that never ends. But you know what? I like it. It's okay. I'm not complaining at all. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's just the same as his holy name and that's the reason why i love him so for my jesus is the sweetest name i know jesus is the sweetest name i know and he's just the same as his holy name and that's the reason why i love him so for my jesus is 
the sweetest name I Thank you, Jim, so much. I want you to be praying for Jim and Katie. But while the service was going on, I stepped outside. You may have seen me. And I didn't know why I was stepping outside until I stepped outside. I had a phone call with a young man by the name of Dan. Dan is uh, that close to ending his life. He needs your prayers. Dan lives in the Glendora area. He's not even from around here. But he put us together this morning while you were in here and Jim was blessing you with music. And a song that came to mind when I came back in was Someone's Praying. And so I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer as we wrap up our time together this morning, now afternoon, to remember Dan and his situation, and that he, through this experience, will find Jesus. Wouldn't that be the greatest experience of all? Gracious, loving Jesus, we thank you for the time we've had to spend with you this morning and today. Bless us in every way. Bless Jim and Katie and their ministry. Bless this congregation. Bless Dan this morning, Lord. Put your arms of love around him and help him to know that you love him, that you died for him, and that you're coming soon to take him and us home with you. And may we all be there or be a part of that marvelous throng of people who are singing the songs that get us closer to you than ever, Jesus. Until then, let's keep a song in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.